Hello, hello. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Jose. How are you doing, my brother? Great. Listening to a new album that okay. I have been loyal. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good to hear. Um, do, you, do you know ACDC? I do. I do. I, I, I like ACDC. I listen to the new album, Power Up. Power Up. Sounds good. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look it up. Power up. I see. Yeah. Power up. Power up. All right. Oh man. I don't know what that was. Let me see. Welcome. Viernes. Nuestro viernes. Little. <laughs> little Friday. El viernes chiquitito. Thursday. Welcome to Friday. Today is week three. Day number four. So week number three is done. Yes. So let me tell you that. I, yeah, finally, finally. So let me tell you that I don't want you guys to think that I'm gothic or anything. Todo gótico, ¿verdad? Porque siempre ando en negro, colores así oscuros. Pero es que piense que my, my wall in the background. Hey, let me show you my wall. Let's see if you guys get here. Oh, that's it. Nice. Let me see. Check it out. Ah, oh, that is, I don't know, that's the weirdest color I have ever known. So, if I use... If I use a different color shirt, cualquier color que no sea así bien oscuro, negro, azul oscuro, se vuelve malísimo. Ah. Y luego no me quedan, pero, por ejemplo, si pongo a San Francisco en the background, con esto, también el monte. Y pues, mejor así a lo, a lo Tony Stark. And so it was really weird because you know, the first few classes, like I could never get the background to work and I didn't understand why. And so what happens is that the background works on whatever color wall you have, but it also uses whatever type of color that you have on. And so I used to have a really big problem because my shirts would look like, you know, like the background. And the background would be just the wall. I don't even know what color it is. So, pero, pero también me da ese, ese look metalero. So, so, so I really like it. I really like it, you know. Yo we también just, soy metalero. Eso, eso. Ahí solo faltan ahí porque no me dejan ponerme el montón de cosas, pero ah. Y los aritos por todos lados. All right, well, that's, that's good to hear. Uh, Elisa, welcome. Hello, hello. Welcome to Little Friday. Good evening. Good evening. Y le vamos a poner aquí Little Friday. Okay. Well, I think we can. I think we can get started. It's it's already eight oh five. And if anybody else joins in, it's Friday. Huh? Yeah, I think that's what it is because it's Friday. Bueno, es nuestro Friday. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what I wanted to share with you guys was we're gonna do, okay. So what I wanted to do for today, since we are, we're actually a little bit of ahead, I wanted to do a couple of things. Uh, the first one was to do a, a review, right? And then we can stop by if you have, if you guys have any questions, for them, we can stop and kind of do like a focus review to the specific questions that you might have. So that was, that was number one. Number two, go into our environment uh, into our work environment 
and then just do a quick review on the section. And that one is going to be a lot faster than the review on the PowerPoint. But um, I just wanted to touch base and ensure that everybody had completed the sections because we are on our last week. Um, next week is going to be week number four. And we should be done. Okay. And we should be graduating. Also, keep in mind que durante la cuarta semana, usted va a comenzar a recibir correos electrónicos y cosas así. Porque if there's anything that is missing, the administrators for the, for the website will be telling you, hey, you're missing this section. Hey, you're missing this acknowledgement. And the idea is for you guys to complete everything here so that you can receive your certificate. And so in order for you guys to receive your certificate, you guys have to have completed all the sections here. Así es que ojo con eso. Acuérdense por favor que se termina diciembre 10 y la idea es terminar todas las secciones para que te salga tu certificado. Ahora, tu certificado, ¿cómo te llega? Fíjense que hay varias maneras. Eh, te lo pueden mandar por WhatsApp. Te lo pueden mandar por correo electrónico. So you can get those two. Email or WhatsApp. Also, here on the, uh, on, the, on the website, you guys will be able to find a button that says my certificate. And so some of you guys might be able to click on it. So the, el botoncito se parece a esto, o sea, azulito. Solo que le va a decir ahí certificado. So certify or certificate. And then you guys click on it. And then you guys are going to be able to see your certificate and also print it out. So um, I think the button, y ese botoncito le va a aparecer cuando ya todo esté completo. So eso ocurre en la cuarta semana. Uh, si por cualquier razón no les aparece el botoncito, no se preocupen, right? Um, if you have completed all, your, all the sections, todavía tienen la opción del correo electrónico y los mensajes por WhatsApp directos de los administradores. So, the admin will send you a direct message or a direct email. Así que ojo con eso, ojo con eso. A ver, so let's get started and let's go... And can you guys all see my screen? Yes. Sí, la pueden ver. Okay. Okay. Entonces, so, aquí este es un, un, un rapidín. Real quick, section number one, I want you guys to ensure that you guys have all the little check marks, all the little check marks, and go through it. Is everybody, has everybody completed section number one? Is everybody good? Yes. Yes. Excellent to hear that. Okay. Let me go ahead and close this one up. Section number two. Is everybody green check mark? Yes. It's complete. Seen? It is complete. Okay. Great. Good to hear. And section number three. How are we looking? Oh my goodness. I'm missing a few. Okay. I think I'm going to finish this one today. I'm missing three people four. Three, the knowledge check for 3.4? Yeah. If you like, we can go through it real quick. Si ustedes pueden ver, yo ya lo terminé. Luego comiencen los lesson objectives. So let's open that up real quick so that you can see it. Una pequeña ayudadita nada más aquí entre, entre compañeros. <laughs> Mire, así le va a aparecer. Now, this one is a little bit this one is a little bit complicated because you have to type the whole request. So make sure the correct spelling and the punctuation. Do not write the whole request, only the completion of it. So comienza aquí te dice, you want to use your roommate's computer, and then you put, is it okay? But you are not supposed to put this portion here. You're only, supposed, you're only supposed to use the ending, which is, if I use your computer. So the whole sentence should say, is it okay if I use your computer? Y la question mark at the end. 
No. Ok. Número dos es el tema. Would you mind? Would you mind giving me a ride to work? Y aquí otra vez la cuestión. Entonces solo se va a poner la segunda parte. La primera no se pone. And then number three and number four se comienza con could you y luego vos lo tenés que formatear. Could you help me move on Saturday? And then question mark. Number four, I was wondering if you'd mind giving me a second piece of pie and then question mark. Y así se pone. If you have any questions, please let me know. And then that way I can help you guys out. Okay. okay. Aquí, aquí quedamos con el knowledge check 3.4. Thank you. Ok. Ahora. Este es el Knowledge Check 3.4. Knowledge Check 3.4. And then the lesson objectives are pretty easy, right? Because you, you, because you only, the only thing you need to do is uh, click on them and then just, you know, kind of go through with it. Um, number 3.6 is favors, which is a video. We come back to the lesson objective. And then 3.8, 3.11 you have the videos but you also have some activities uh, that some of those videos have and then it finishes off with the knowledge check and the midterm okay ojo con la section three y estamos en la section four bueno completamos sí 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 good night good. hello hello <laughs> how, how can i help you uh, in section three I had a problem with the 3.12 in the knowledge check. Ooh, 3.12. 3.12 is tough. Uh, let me see. Let me bring it up. I think this one took me. Yeah, this one is the one that didn't want to get. So what, what yeah. was happening here is it didn't matter what I wrote. It would not accept it. So it, it was a little bit frustrating. So now with this one. Aparte de esos problemitas, eh, ¿cómo lo resolví yo? Bueno, cuando estaba poniendo, puse los, puse los puntos, puse la apostrofe, puse la question mark, ¿verdad? Porque yo lo que estaba buscando es, maybe, maybe it was looking for something like this, right? Um, so, another thing that I did is cerré el browser y lo volví a abrir. And then kind of like a little refresh, just to ensure, okay? So those are some things that you can try también si ustedes están teniendo problemas. And so here in this one, no sé si ustedes se recuerdan que cubrimos los indirect requests. Yes. Indirect requests, right? So lo que vos estás haciendo es you're going to ask someone to deliver the message to you. And the only thing you have to complete is what's missing. Pero tenés que tener cuidado because you need correct spelling and punctuation. Entonces, aquí fue donde yo también me, 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 medio me fui porque dijo, maybe they're looking for dots. Maybe they're looking for, you know, uh, for example, Tony, because it's a name. It has to have like, you know, it has to have the full, you know, the, the T in cap, in capitalized. And so I, I kind of looked around to see what was happening. So in this one here, you don't have to write everything here right you only do the indirect request portion and so here we start off with you know blank space how many friends i can bring to his party so now that sentence is missing something how many friends i can bring to his party when Tony, how many friends can I bring to the party? Lo que te están diciendo aquí es el direct request. Vos estás hablando con Tony y tú le estás preguntando, mira Tony, how many friends can I bring to the party? So, how do we turn a direct request into an indirect request? Bueno, 
could you ask Tony how many friends I can bring to this party? Y esa es la porción que tú necesitas poner at the very beginning. So in this particular case, we're going to use could, you, and then we're going to say ask Tony. So could you ask Tony how many friends can I bring to the party? We added could you ask, aquí en esta porción, could you ask Tony how many friends can I bring to the party? And then so this one becomes the indirect request. Este es para la número uno. Ahora, le recuerdo, tuve, tuve problemitas porque le ponía la C mayúscula, eh, el Tony se lo ponía con, con baja, entonces me estaba dando bastante errores. Al final lo dejé así sin ponerle nada, le di submit y me lo aceptó. Cuando le di refresh, ya me lo aceptó. Así es que si ustedes habían estado teniendo problemas, puede hacer que eso, se, que, que eso sea algo que les ocurra. Y también chequear el spelling. A ver, con la número dos. Could you ask Sofía? And then it goes blank. Y luego, Sofía, are you going to the party with Jeff? Entonces, una vez más, this is the direct request. Y el indirect request se convierte en Could you ask Sofía if she is going to the party with Jeff? Ahí está. Question mark. Ahora, este de aquí sí me aceptó el question mark y así lo tomó como bueno. So, in this one you do need the question mark. Could you ask Sofía if she is going to the party with Jeff? Y esa es la porción que hace falta aquí. Número tres. It starts off. Acuérdense la, what we need. Could you ask? Es la porción que hace falta. Could you ask Kevin? Okay. Whether or not he accepted the invitation to Tony's party. Could you ask Kevin? Entonces tomamos the direct one y solo le agregamos could you ask? Could you ask Kevin whether or not he accepted the invitation to Tony's party? And then number four, could you ask Mario? And then the blank space y luego the direct format. Hey Mario, are you going to give Tony a gift? Right? Could you ask Mario if he's going to give Tony a gift question? And then that's, that's it. Entonces, literalmente en una de estas, miren, aquí agregamos las palabras could you, right? Well, in, in this particular case, era could you ask a lo que ya teníamos que era Tony. En esta de aquí lo hicimos como if she. Right? Could you ask Sophia if she? And then we did, could you ask Kevin? And if he's going to give, was the last one that we used. Could you ask Mario if he's going? Y si ustedes se fijan acá, aquí tengo la pasta. Okay. Eh, usted, los estaba poniendo así ustedes. Sí, 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 sí. Sí, estaba. Y, bueno, no lo, en realidad y... en, la, en la segunda me había confundido. Creo que mandé una captura ahí al grupo que me había confundido. Okay. <ríe> en la segunda y en la cuatro. En la segunda y la cuatro. Ok. Ah. Eh, entonces, eh, solo recuerde que vamos a ocupar if she is going. Could you ask Sofía if she is going to the party? Y también para okay. la cuatro. Para la cuatro también. If he's going. Ok. Y ya le tengo que bien. Ok. Ah, me avisa si le da algún error porque acuérdese que por veces la plataforma también se vuelve loca. Ok. So, so let, me, let me know, let me know. Ok. Ese era el 3.12, section 3.12. Ok. And so, si lo están terminando, 
please make sure that you guys complete it. No, no se le puede olvidar alguna sección como a mí. Miren, se me ha olvidado varias secciones porque como pienso que ya las terminé y ya no las vuelvo a ver. So, um, section three, and then we come to section four. As you guys can see, I pretty much, this one is pretty much set. Tengo dos videos que creo que necesito verlos. And then I'm going to have section four completed. A ver, ¿cómo están ustedes con section four? Is everybody okay with section four? Si no lo han terminado, it's okay. You still have Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because we don't start seeing section five till Monday. That That is the plan. Okay. All right. All right, so during the sections, sections one through four, there was a lot of stuff that we covered. You guys are probably not aware of how much stuff we covered, but it was a lot. And so what I wanted to do is kind of go back and touch base on the items that we had already covered, just in case maybe you guys slightly forgot because all of the items that we cover in classes they come up in future classes no sé si se han, se han percatado de eso por ejemplo si hablamos de sentence uh, uh, si hablamos de, de tenses eh, en alguno de las en alguna de las lecciones um, later on in the next module or in the next sections you guys always go back and they touch up on it y el Final test trata de cubrir todo lo que se ha cubierto. So, so uh, I mean, it, it tries to ensure that everything that we covered in the lesson, we try to touch up on it during the final exam. Maybe one or two questions, but it's going to be there. So, so I want you guys to be prepared for that final exam. Eh, si ya lo tomaron y ya lo pasaron, well done. Uh, eh, si ya se metí, si ya como dicen, si ya, se, si ya entraron al examen para ver cómo estaba, también also well done because you're, you're, you know, you're getting prepared and your mind is going to be ready for that. Okay, so what I wanted to do was kind of go back and I, since we have the presentation, kind of just go through the slides and look guys, we have almost 60 slides of information that we have covered. Now, I won't be able to stay on the presentation or on the slides for too long, but whatever information you guys think you need, please let me know, and then we can focus on it a little bit more, okay? So this is how we started our, you know, our first week, week number one. We did a little bit of a review on what was a pronoun. Who can remember what a pronoun does? What is a pronoun and what does it do? A pronoun is a word who takes the, the, the place of the noun. Great, great. And why do we use pronouns? What is the number one reason that we use pronouns? What is it that we don't want to do on a sentence? You know, maybe give a sense to the, give, give an idea. idea. Okay. Okay, okay, I'll accept that. Now, there, there is a specific reason why we use pronouns, all right? What does it prevent us from doing? Nosotros decimos valga la redundancia. But in English, there's nothing that, that we can say like that. So, the pronoun prevents... What does it prevent? Anybody? 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 Repetition. So, in español, vos podés repetir, and, and you can do it, and then all you have to do is excuse yourself and say, ah, oh, valga la redundancia. But in English, you can't do that, right? Because then what you're, what you're trying to say is that maybe you're running out of words, or maybe your vocabulary is not, you know, the best. And so in, for you to repeat yourself is actually not, not the best thing to happen. So what happens is that they created the pronouns. And we use pronouns in English to prevent from you having to repeat yourself in a sentence. And so instead of uh, the example is, you know, you already use the name Joe and Jill. 
you don't want to use it again. So in this particular case, you would swap out yo and you would replace it with he and you are also going to change Jill to uh, her, right? Her or she or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you want to use. But you will not be able to use Joe and Jill again because then it's going to sound kind of weird. So he and her instead of Joe and Jill. That's the example. So, so pronouns are, are made with that in mind, right? Um, so that you can say things like I, me, he, she, herself, you, it, that, they, each, few, many, who, whoever, whose, someone, everybody, right? These are the different versions of pronouns, and they are used to prevent repetition. Everybody good? Everybody okay with that so far? What is a pronoun used for? What do you prevent? Repetitions. Repetition, right? You don't want to sound like you're repeating the same stuff over and over again. Okay. All right. So then we talked about some of these rules and I, I think we had some here. Uh, you know, when, uh, who refers to a personal pronoun, it takes a verb that agrees with the pronoun. So that, that is something that you guys should, uh, keep in mind. The correct way of saying it, it is I who am sorry, right? That is like you saying, I am sorry. So it is I who I it is I who am sorry. Now, there's people that say it is I who is sorry. That, that is incorrect. So please keep that in mind. So we, we, we touched up on correct and incorrect. Um, then we went over relative pronouns. Do you remember the relative pronouns? What are they? What did they do? Relative pronouns. What, well, you, can, you guys can look at here, right? What do they do? What are they used for? A relative pronoun is used. Is used to express uh, an action, an idea. Is used to express, okay. Now, I will accept that answer. And I want, I, I want to kind of amplify it a little bit, right? So when you use a relative pronoun, it is because you want to identify somebody in the sentence, or you want to say something interesting about that person that you're talking about. So you have two options, right? So if you are using relative pronouns, you are either going to identify the subject, or you are going to say something interesting about it and the examples is there is a man right and what we want to know is who is that man in order to identify that man we use a relative pronoun which is the man who won the lottery is outside is the example right so who is that man that's outside oh he's the man that won the lottery and that's a relative pronoun. Yeah. Inspector Smith, who won the lottery, is outside. So this one, we already know that he won, or we already know the person who won the lottery. Well, we already know Inspector Smith is outside, I should say. I think that's the better way. ¿Quién está afuera? Inspector Smith. Aha. Uh -huh. ¿Y eso? Ah, oh, él es el hombre que se ganó la lotería. Y ya puedes dar voz tú. Oh, a ver si me presta pista. Yeah. So, relative pronouns, they are used to identify the subject and they are used to say something interesting about the subject. Okay? Keep that in mind. Um, we talked a little bit about the relative pronouns and what are the relative pronouns that we can use. And we mentioned that we could use that which, who, whom, and whose. And so when you talk about who and whom, you can say that you are referring to a person. So you can say either who or you can say whom. And 
that is a person who, are, who you are referring to. If you say which, you are referring to an animal or a thing, like a chair, right? If you are saying what, this refers to a non-living thing, like a table, bueno, una piedra, right, a rock. So anything that is non-living, we can say what. That can be used for people, animals, or things. Be careful how you use the words. You don't want to say which when you are referring to a person because he might get offended, right? And they might tell you, I'm not a dog. Eh, creo que en español hay uno. There, there, there is also something. Like when you say, ay, es que las patas. Escuchas a varias personas que dicen las patas y te dicen, patas, yo no tengo patas, yo no soy animal. <laughs> Right? And then so some people could get offended if you guys use which, right? For a person. So, ojo con eso. Ojo con eso. Relative pronouns, that, which, who, whom, and whose. And some examples here that we can use. The dog that stole the pie is back. My new dog, which I bought last year, loves green beans. The person who bought his car found a three-carat diamond under the seat. Our lawyer, whom we employed for over a year, was related to the complainant. The young girl whose cat scratched our sofa has offered to replace the cushions. Oh, how nice. And these are relative pronouns, okay? All right. Then we did our first activity with these pictures that I really like. I actually, I, I tried to find out what these guys are, but I still haven't found out. I just, you know, it just looks kind of, it looks kind of cool. And these were the ones that explained. Um, if you're using a relative, what is the definition of the relative? And the definition, a pronoun that heads an adjective clause. And then we have an explanation of what the adjective clause is that ate the cake. And then we have the relative pronoun, which is stuck in there. And so the sentence is now complete. The dog that ate the cake is looking guilty, right? That is a complete sentence with the adjective clause, the relative pronoun, and how it works to modify the noun. We also saw a little bit of the identification. The relative pronoun is used to identify. So in that particular case, we use uh, who, because we're talking about a man, okay? In this particular case, we use the which, because we are talking about a car. So his car, which is two days old, broke down again. Which, who, and that. Once we covered the relative pronouns, we moved into some exercises with personalities. And these are adjectives for personalities, right? Oh, that, he looks negative. Or you can say that person is negative. What does it mean when you tell somebody that they're negative? ¿Tienen algún amigo ustedes que es bien negativo? Siempre. I had a friend. I had a friend that everything was, oh my God, nah, ya se acabó el mundo. Cuando, cuando regresó, cuando vino el COVID-19, se volvió loco. Porque he kept saying on Facebook que tenía la razón. Ya ven, yo les dije, yo tenía la razón. Entonces, bien negativo, all the time. But he's my friend and I love him, so, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Okay. Algún amigo ustedes that was hot tempered have you guys ever heard of that hot tempered not a friend but a lot of bosses <laughs> okay yeah yeah hot tempered bosses yes yes sir yes sir and so bien bravucones bien enojones 
todo ese enojo, todo, todo. Como nosotros le decimos, ¿cómo decimos? Mecha corta, right? Ah. Mecha corta, I think we have the name for that one. Hot tempered. All right, once we cover the personalities, uh, we did a quick review on what is a noun, what is a pronoun, what was an adjective, what was a relative pronoun. Kind of doing like a little review before we move ahead. Uh, what is a subject? What is an object? What was a possessive in a sentence? And we discussed those. We moved into the famous clause or las clausulas. And we talked about what the clauses were. And so keep in mind that the clauses can be any number of clauses, right? And so what we talked about here is that it was a group of words that included subjects and verbs. And what they did is their main function was to act as an adjective, an adverb, or a noun. So there were signs in a sentence where you needed to put a clause in in order to give it a different type of meaning. And you needed an adjective, an adverb, or a noun. So what you did is you included a clause and you got yourself an adjective, an adverb, or a noun. And then, so how did you do it? We have three different examples, right? A clause functioning as an objective, as an adjective, I'm sorry, as an adjective. My friend who has autism, we have the subject, we have the verb, we have the main word, which is autism, is brilliant at quizzes. In this particular setup, we are using it as an adjective. And so we are creating an adjective because we are saying that he is brilliant, okay? And then we talked about making it work as a noun. Uh, in this particular case, we have the sentence, I cannot remember what happened last night. And then here we have the subject, here we have the verb. And in this particular clause, it is working and it sounds like a noun. And number three, which is the adverb. He put on weight when he stopped running. And so the, here we have the subject, here we have our verb. And in this particular sentence, we are using it as an adverb and the sentence still has structure and the idea remains the same. Once we cover the clauses, we did a, we did a quick review on which clauses and we talked about having two types of clauses, an independent clause and a dependent clause. Who can help me reading both of these? Volunteers. Okay, me teacher. Oh, please, please, Natalie. A ver, help me read with, help me read these. An independent clause uh, um, that can stand along of a sentence. Okay. Dependent clause on that is usually a supporting part of sentence. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that's it. So you have an independent clause and with, that means that the sentence can stand by itself. Okay. It doesn't need anything else you can read that portion and somebody will understand it but a dependent clause cannot stand by itself if you write it by itself then somebody will have a lot of questions because they won't know what you're talking about and so the example que ocupamos fue the patrol had spotted the sniper esa ahí ya está En realidad no necesita nada más. No hay más explicación. Ya se sabe que eh, estaban patrullando y ya se sabe que encontraron al francotirador. And that's really all that matters, right? Now, on a true sentence, 
you might want to bring up more important information and that's why there's the second part okay Porque somebody might ask, where did they find them, right? And then so what you want to do is you want to say the sentence with as much information as possible so that you don't get questions. And so the patrol had spotted the sniper who was hiding in an attic. And, and that's it, right? And then here we are. So the second portion who was hiding in an attic is added to clarify pero si, si tú lo pones solito, si tú solo dices who was hiding in an attic y lo dejas ahí o se lo decís a alguien, somebody will say who was hiding in an attic. What are you talking about? Right? Entonces, este no se puede dejar solo. So, we talked about that. We also talked about how we were using them. Uh, we used them as noun clauses, adjective clauses, and adverbial clauses. And that was another portion of what we were looking at. We talked about some of that. I don't mind it. Uh, this was the use of it in a clauses. I don't like it. I can't stand it. Or, you know, those are the negative. You can do the positive. I like it when someone gives me a compliment. Or you could say things like, I love it. I like it. I love it. And then you add the when and you let us know what's going on. Right? I like it when you say these things to me, right? And you can leave it like that, and it sounds really good. Once we cover that, we talked about personalities. Uh, six times of personalities, we had artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Uh, once we completed that, we talked about gerunds. And you have to remember the gerunds are the verbs that end with ing, but they are subject to specific rules that makes them the gerunds. If they are not within that specific rule, then it is just a verb with an ing, and it's called the verbing. That, that's one of the ways that you can say it, verbing. There's verbing, there's gerunds, and then I, I, I believe we talked about another one. There was like a third one. I think we're gonna come up on it, okay? Uh, gerunds are the verbs that end with ing, but that they have a specific job, okay? Uh, so once we cover the gerunds, we talk about how to use them. Um, these are the specific rules. So it is considered a gerund if you are using it as the subject of a verb, as the object of a verb as the object of a preposition and as a subject complement. If you are using these four, then whatever word you put with an ing becomes a gerund. We talked about the verb ing, which is in this particular form is just known as verbing, right? Verb and then ending with ing. And some examples like I am writing a book, which is what we were using. We talked about comparatives, or we saw comparatives. We discussed the participles, and we talked about the verbs. Present participle and past participle. And so here we see them again with ing, right? But in this particular case, because we're talking about the past, it is not known as a gerund. It is known as a past participle. Past participle because you're using it in a very specific tense. Okay. We covered the verbs. We talked about the comparisons, which once you start looking for the information, it is actually known as comparatives saying words like he is taller, smarter, more likely or less likely, comparisons. We have the degrees of comparisons. We looked at the positive degree, comparative degree, and the superlative degree. Gave you some examples. 
original word is big and we talk about making it bigger and then did you receive the biggest right bigger or biggest and we talk about some of the rules behind using the er the es est and then the more or most once we completed that we talked about the past participles and the present participles some examples that you guys can see over here of a past participle as an adjective spoken words cannot be revoked right so you use the spoken as a past participle as a present participle he is reading a book okay then we started doing the reviews with the words that end in Y. Um, we talked about happy, busy, and how you can turn those into comparative or superlative. Okay. We talked about some of the words where we can use more or most because there's no other option. You can't add the er or the es or the est so instead of saying angrily est right because it would be wrong you would say more angrily and so these are some of the words where you can use more or most uh, we talked about the models right so with this one uh, can could is it okay do you mind would it be okay would you mind I wonder if, I was wondering if you'd mind. And these are the requests using the model. We did some exercises with models. Can, could, would. Is it okay? Do you mind? Would it be okay? I wonder if. These are some of the examples that we touched up on. And then we worked with the if clauses. Do you mind if the model verbs could or would? Could I borrow your pen? Would you mind babysitting? Once we completed that, we went into indirect requests and we discussed making statements into indirect requests by adding could you, right? Could you tell Jeff that? Tony's having a party. Could you tell Jeff not to be late, which is the imperative, indirect, using infinitives. Please keep in mind that infinitives are the two, like the words two. Once we covered the indirect request, we started looking at the different versions and how to convert a direct request into an indirect request. Indirect questions and how to formulate them. Indirect patterns, which was the introductory phrase, the question word, and then the request. The example that we used was, can you tell me what time the train is? And these were using the time frame or uh, time. Indirect requests. I wonder whether Anne is happy. Okay, pretty easy there. We started talking about the tenses and we went through the tense, simple past, past continuous. Uh, we did some exercises with simple past and the past continuous so that you guys could practice them. I went to the cinema yesterday, right? Simple past. And the past continuous, which is also known as past progressive. I was watching TV when the phone rang. So uh, yeah, quick example there. We kept talking about the tense. Well, actually, tense took a really big portion of the last week. We talked about past continuous, simple past, the verses of a past simple and past continuous. Did some exercises here. We did a quick tense review, kind of make sure that we stay informed there. And then we began seeing past perfect, okay? And these were, you know, he had finished the test when the bell rang. The subject adding the word had and then the past participle to make it work. And every past perfect sentence 
that does not have a not is a positive. If it has a not, then it is a negative. So that one was pretty easy. We also did some exercises there. And we talked about how it worked. Past perfect. And the example, the meeting had already started by the time I arrived. So something was happening in the past. And then once you got there at 15, right? There was the crash. Talked about past perfect tense and how to make them work. Indirect speech in past perfect. And as you guys can see, it is the same whether you're doing direct or indirect. All you have to do is add had and you are a okay. Past perfect tenses. Past perfect positive and negative. And I gave you guys some examples there. How it gets put together. The formula, which is adding had to the past participle. In this case, I had jumped. Forming the past participle with a regular verb. And so it tells you, you have the word jump. And all you need to do is add the ED for jumped or paint for painted. And then we talked about that. And we also did a couple of exercises. The negative version, which is adding the word not so had not, or the contraction had hadn't. Talked about the questions and how you ask it. Had silver finger taken? As you guys can see, you started off with had, and then the subject, and then the past participle. We finished it off with past perfect contractions. And we talked about I had, you had, he had, she had, it had, we had, they had. And we completed section four. Yay, well done, everybody. Good job, everybody. Yeah. So as you guys can see, even though you guys might have thought, oh, we haven't seen anything with the teacher, you know, we actually covered a lot. We have covered a lot of information and I want you guys to be proud of yourselves because between the platform and the classes, you know, sometimes it could get a little bit busy and hectic and you guys have done a wonderful, wonderful job. Do you guys have any questions in regards to any of the stuff that we covered, anything that we might have left pending? Everybody all right? Everything is okay. Everything's okay? Okay. okay. Teacher. During this last week, we, I'm going to incorporate, I told you guys that we're going to incorporate some role plays, remember? And uh, so yeah. we're going to yes. have, have a little bit of time during week five and where we're going to practice with some role plays. And so for that, I'm going to ask you guys, you know, if you guys want to volunteer and try it out. We could do the role plays are really small and we can really work on pronunciation, um, rhythm, intonation, and just the conversation overall. Okay. So that's, that's the goal for week number five to get you guys a little bit better with implementing all of this information that we just saw. And since you guys did a, you guys did such a great job. Verdad? Regresamos a la plataforma, sección número cuatro, and you guys can actually go through the items and you guys can see that we, we were able to cover a lot of that in the same information. And we went above and beyond because we did a little bit more explaining, but at the same time, uh, you know, absolutely necessary for us. Okay. All right. Well, guys. I wanted to give you guys a little bit, you know, more time today since it's our Thursday. Oh, cálmese, teacher, no nos de tanto. Uy, cálmese con esos cinco minutos, por favor. Les quería dar unos cinco minutos de regreso a este tiempo. Les quiero desear una really happy weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, make sure you guys get your work done on the platform. 
And if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. All right, well, giving you guys your five minutes back, I wanna wish you guys a happy weekend and thank you guys for coming in today. Thank you, teacher. Good thank night. Thank you, have thank a good night. Teacher. Take good care, evening. everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.